Yeah. Yeah, can everyone see my screen? Yes, I should. Yeah, fine. Okay. So, Vivek, can you go go to mute? Oh, sorry, sir. Okay, fine. Okay, guys, uh, so far, uh, whatever we discussed is we discussed data types, loops, arrays, right? So we discussed how to do all these things in Java, okay? So the next topic, what we're going to see today is we're going to see methods, which is equivalent to functions in C, C++, okay? Yeah. And after this, we're going to see uh, what do you mean by classes, which is nothing but heterogeneous data type, and what is object, and how to create a array of objects, and so on. Fine. And if possible, we will see encapsulation. So this is a agenda for today. So when we see what is a method, methods as I told, it's an equivalent to functions in C or C++. So far, everything we write inside a main method, right? So we have this method: public, static, void, main, string args. So you need to know what is this function what is this method signature and what is these things are okay so we will discuss this later okay for now what you need to understand is public is access specifier okay it can be private public protected we will discuss on this but for a main method it should be public if you give private the program will not compile okay you cannot run such a main method okay so it's a starting point for a starting point anyone to access outside it should be public Static means you need not want an object to access it. We will discuss these things in de detail. I'm just telling what is a, just static. You need not want an object to access it. So anyone can access it using the class name itself. What you need to consider here mainly is these two things for today. Void main and string args. Fine. What is void? This is called return type and this is called method name main. And this is called parameters. So you are passing a string array to a main function. When you run a main program using command line arguments, you could be able to give the args string. Fine. So that means you can give a set of strings so that you can access it. Okay. So that is what uh, wide main string args. Fine. So yeah, as I told, today we're going to discuss methods, classes, and what is encapsulation and so on. So public, static, void main. So what you need to concentrate now? Void main string args. Void is a return type, main is a method name, and string args is the argument or parameters. So if I want to write an add function, okay, general add method. General syntax of a method is you will have a return type. In Java, you will be having this access specifier. Okay. For now, you just understand the access specifier. Every time we will put public for now. Okay. And followed by you can put either static or static without static. Okay. That depends how you call that method. But what you need to understand is from here. You need to have a return type followed by a method name and arguments. So arguments will be you need to specify a data type argument one data type argument 2 and so on fine so this is a typical method it will be like this suppose i want to write a add method i can write like this public void add int a comma into b okay so what i can do i can define one more variable into c c equal to a plus b sys out c See here, 
the add method takes two arguments this is called function or method definition definition means you are defining the entire method here okay so the main purpose of going to methods are you the code will become easier easier to debug easier to maintain okay instead of writing thousands of lines in the main main program itself that means in public static void main itself you can split it the second point is you can reuse the code okay if you want to add, do a add fun, add method multiple times you can call the add method okay instead of writing the code again and again it will form like a utility fine you want to do this i'm going to do this fine so what about these int a and int b these are arguments internally the compiler will convert like this only public all the data types arguments the parameters internally it will convert like public void add it will do like int a comma int b internally it will do like this so what does it mean a and b are local variables what do you mean by local variables once the method add finishes the scope of the variables will die a and b values will will die die means you will not be able to access in the main program fine so a and b are local variables or data types here so c c equal to a plus b is sort c so wherever you call this so if you want the method to return some value instead of void you can do int and instead of printing there you can return using a return statement return c okay meaning when i call the add method using two values it going to add and return me a value then you can assign the add method to some variable in your main program fine so this is a general uh, method name and the syntax how it will be like data types arguments and the return type so all the programs from now whatever you write you should specify in terms of methods you should not write everything directly fine whenever you give a return statement in a method immediately even if you have many lines after the return statement okay it will the flow will return directly to the place where the fun method has been called okay now i will define one write a complete program suppose this is my public static void main fine i am in x comma y comma z what i am doing here sys out when i enter the first number yeah sys out enter the first number next what i am going to do x is equal to assume scanner is defined sc dot next int and y equal to again sc dot next int this is for the second number fine so what i am going to do now enter the second number for adding what i will do i will call the add function add of x comma y so after the main is closed you need to define the add method here okay then method is a name in java function is a we call it in c and c++ okay so what you can do as i said public void add void is a return type because i'm not going to return anything x comma y i am going to put int a comma int b here what i am going to do int c c equal to a plus b and sys out c now see the flow of the program int x comma y comma z you need to understand how it works internally then only you will be very uh, you will be having a good idea on how methods are working fine so let us see here how things are work in text comma y comma z so six bytes will be allocated two bytes for x two bytes for y two bytes for z and enter the first number uh, you need to give this x equal to c dot next int here immediately or continuously that is fine enter the first number enter the second number whatever the user enters will be stored in x second number if you enter stored in y add of x comma y now the flow will come here whatever the value in x okay that is separate memory location in ram x and y when it comes here int a and int b are two separate memory locations it is not x and y again it is two differently total separate memory locations so int a comma int b means the value in x will be copied to a value in y will be copied to b say for example x x in the memory location 3000 y in the memory location 4000 int a comma int b 
A is in the memory location thousand. B is in the memory location two thousand. Now what will happen here? X will be copied to A. Y will be copied to B. So value in the X and Y also will be the same. Value in A and B also will be the same. So these are totally a different memory. Okay. Once this add function completes, right? The A and B are no more. Okay. This is called local variables. So this is not the same memory address that you need to understand. X and Y is different. A and B is different. But what it will do compiler internally when you do this, it will do like void add. This will be the statements it will do right internally. Int A equal to X. Int B equal to Y. It will copy it from there. Okay. This is what will happen. So if you do some modification, so, yeah. Sure. Sorry, to, sorry to interrupt. So if we change the value of A inside the method, the X will not change, right? The X no, will no, be no. Same. It will not be changed. These are just called by values. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah. okay. The reason is A and B are. That's what I am telling. You. A and B are totally different memory locations. Those okay. So not, whatever. Hmm. No. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So whatever you do for A, say for example, I give like A equal to A plus ten, B equal to B plus ten, and if I print X and Y here, it won't be getting changed because this is different memory location. Okay, these are just another variable name inside the method. Okay, people will get confused okay. when I give like this. I can give like this also in text comma in the way that doesn't matter. It's just a variable name. I can give like this also. C equal to X plus Y. Now you think like everyone will think, oh, this X and this X are same, this Y and this Y are same. So that what will happen if I do like X equal to X plus ten, Y equal to Y plus ten, it will be changed in the main method. No, guys, not at all. This X and Y is different. This X and Y is in the main memory, okay, in the main main program, public state. This X and Y is a local variable to the add. This just a name, similar to A and B I gave, right? Similar to X and Y. What will happen? Say for example, this might be in the memory location three thousand. Why is in four thousand? These are new memory location thousand and two thousand. From this, this will be get copied. Once this method is over, these memory values are garbage collected or died. You got it? Yes, sir. Yes. Any doubt, guys? Other other people? Okay. Cool. Harika. पवित्रा what happens when you pass an object and we will deal those things but for primitives this what this is what going to be happen in java everything is called by value okay they say that in java everything is called by value means in terms of objects it will differ if you change inside it will change we will see that later for now what you need to understand is whenever i define an formal arguments like this complete it's a new memory location x comma y it's quite a new memory location and whatever you do changes here it will not change So to get the values from the method, what you can ask? Then I do some computation. I want some value back to the method. What I can do? Yeah, you can simply do one one statement like this. Return. You can do some manipulation in return statements also. X plus y. So that value you can store it in z. Z equal to add of x comma y. So what is going to happen here? You pass x. You pass y. Again, remember this x is different from this x, but it just copies. Y and add both. The value will be written. It should not be void here. It should be int. So you need to specify what type of data type you are returning. It's an integer data type. So you return an int, and that int will be stored in Z. Now, since this is an int, this also be should be int. You cannot assign it to a character here. So once this function completely evaluates, it will return you a integer. That particular integer will be stored in variable called Z, and you can print it sys of Z. Yeah. So as I told, this is the flow. Again, I am repeating. We are discussing about methods, right? So x, y, z. Once the user enter the first number, you are stored in x. Enter the second number, stored in y. When you call add of x comma y, 
another memory int x and int y is created the value of x is copied to this x value of y is copied to this y this x comma y is local to the variable called add and return x comma y x plus y the value is added and written and it will be stored in variable called z fine and finally i am printing z Ashok. yeah ashok uh, one doubt so yeah. do we always need to catch the return value in java so return we... type is not necessary to assign okay in c and c++ you need to always if if the function if the method is going to give a return value like int it is mandatory in c and c++ you assign to a some data type like z equal to in java there won't be any error if you leave like this there are no compilation error okay. but the purpose of our program is not satisfied got it guys it's okay. a valid question so everyone listen so if i return anything in java java will not check whether you need to assign to some proper data type okay in c and c++ it will in c and c++ it will throw in compilation error like it will say like you need to incompatible types assigned something like that but in java you can leave like this add of x comma y nothing going to happen it going to return some value you didn't copied you didn't catch it that value so it's lost if this is will print a junk value this out z means junk value only will come okay so we are put like this okay so z equal to add of x comma y this out z so this is this is how we define a methods fine you can pass an array also inside a method i will tell that how to pass an array so so far we just passed in variables these are called arguments this is method call and this is method definition and this is return type fine now we will see how we can pass uh, uh, arrays to a method okay so if i define like this int a equal to new int of 10 say for example yeah i'm going to write a method called input arr okay and double arr this is my main program okay from line number 57 assume it's my main program yeah in the rr in new int double arr double means double it double it arr so i'm going to just double the contents and output arr so simple so so far what we discussed is when you pass some variables into your method right it will get created a new memory location that is for primitives not for arrays very important new memory location gets created in function in method definition what are those like uh, parameters okay only for primitives only for primitives not for objects or arrays very important reason uh, arrays are if you see if i create another new memory location for an array in another method think how complicated it will be it has to create another 20 bytes of memory if i say int r equal to new int of 10 okay if i create new memory again copying all the things it will take lot of time user has no restriction of giving this i can give 10000 1000 also then what will happen allocating another 20000 bytes of memory it's not a easy task for it okay so what it will do for primitives it will create a new memory location for array and all it will not create so public void input int yeah i can give like this or i can give like this also it's my wish the syntax wise int a yeah. or you can you can space without specifying the size also you can give like this it will automatically resolve the size how much you pass so meaning is what i am passing arr you may think a yeah. see arr is just a name which pointing to this 20 bytes of memory location that you need to understand arr is just a variable name which is pointing to this memory location so when i declared this arr might point to your memory location called 2000 from 2000 to 2019 when i call input of arr this it will match this method input of a now a also will point to the same memory location it doesn't mean that a is separately occupies a different memory of 20 bytes no for arrays 
वाट एवर बोथ विल रिफर टू द सेम मेमोरी लोकेशन मीनिंग इफ यू चेंज एनीथिंग इनसाइड द मेथड इट विल रिफ्लेक्ट थ्रू आउट गॉट इट गेस इफ ऐ डू एनीथिंग इन साइड द मेथड दैट्स वाई आई कॉल्ड इनपुट ओके वेन आई डिक्लेयर द आर ए थिंग्स आर एम टी यू डोंट गेट कंफ्यूज विद दीज नेम्स नेम्स आर लाइक जस्ट सम वेरिएबल थिंग्स विच पॉइंट्स टू सम मेमोरी लोकेशन एंड ऑफ द डे इफ थ्री आर फोर वेरिएबल पॉइंट्स टू द सेम मेमोरी लोकेशन एनी वन ऑफ द वेरिएबल चेंजेस द मेमोरी वैल्यू इट गोना चेंज इन एवरी एवरी वेयर करेक्ट या so it is like you have some point at some variable name pointing to some memory location in the previous case here what we happened in this add it is just a new value gets created new memory location got created and so whatever you do modification it will not that will that is a case only for primitives not for objects or arrays so when i say input of a here a and ar are both points to the same memory location so i can easily put a loop and get the input to make sure the array gets filled here i can do it okay i can put like a of i equal to sc dot next int so automatically when the method is over the arr get filled got it any doubt in this no sir this is important. so whatever uh, okay whatever the values in a is changed so it, it will change in array also right arr yeah 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 what you need to understand is arr a end of the day everything points to the same memory location got it okay so the program will not create a new memory location for array and all okay. it will okay. just do for primitives uh uh so what happens if uh, use uh, uh, argument uh, ca in arr at the uh, both uh, both the ends i use here or what happens? nothing will happen that's what i am telling you can have the same name different name. The memory is important okay the variable names are just in okay. check for some particular memory location so nothing going to happen you can use arr arr itself see in this example itself you used x and x you can use a and b also but you need to understand here this x and y are totally different memory location if you change x inside it will not reflect here okay this is different memory location but array is not that way that's what i am telling array is totally it, it will not create a new memory when you pass as an argument in the function it will refer to the same memory fine okay okay uh, andrel yourself did you understood i am sure i understood you understood right so whatever you do modification inside an array right inside the method it will reflect throughout Okay, that you need to understand. Harika and Pavitra. Nice. Okay. Fine. So now, so now continuing this. If I do some uh, double it, so public void double it. See, I am going to use another name. Need to be naming is not at all a issue. Okay, you can use any name. End of the day, what will happen eventually is int a r r new int ten na. Suppose A R R points to memory location of three thousand. Now input of A R R means it passes the address, a starting address of the array. So that starting address of three thousand A also will point. Again double it A R R na it passes the starting address of the array. That same three thousand B also will point. So subsequent cells it does modification. It will reflect into the same memory location. So double it for double it I can put one more function for int i equal to zero, i less than ten, i plus plus. And here, what I can do? I can simply do a of i is equal to sc dot next int. Okay, it's b of i. Okay, these are these are just local variables. Fine, int b. Okay, so local variables, but pointing to this memory location. Got it? Yeah. So now public void output. out i can display things here for int j equal to 0 j less than 10 j plus plus out so when you write programs like this maintenance will be very easy you can just see where your problem and you can debug that particular methods alone so i am going to print it here i am going to get output i am just going to print sys out out of j 
okay so what will happen when i run this program first array is declared input means if i enter numbers like 10 20 30 till 100 a of 0 will be 10 a of 1 is 20 a of 2 is 30 so on i am doubling it yeah doubling logic will be like this b of i yeah into 2 so that means i am just doubling the content when i print it back here out of j out of 0 will be 20 out of 1 will be 40 because here i have doubled it okay so what you need to understand end of the day this one this one and this one everything points to the same memory location it doesn't matter about the name got it guys everyone clear with this program yes sir yeah yeah fine yeah yes sir okay cool right so now we will yesterday we were doing one program right a 2d array so we will convert that into completely into methods okay now i am going to show it you in eclipse so how to convert the complete program into methods so what will happen end of the day uh, if i have a one input method that is enough for n number of arrays say for example in this itself i have two arrays int array int arr2 equal to new int of 10 i can use the same method input of arr of 2 i need not write the code see the reusability here what will happen first time when input is called it goes to here with the starting address of say for arr it's 3000 arr2 is 4000 when i call input of arr for 3000 it will come here this when it gets filled arr only will get filled when i call input of arr2 the starting address of 4000 points to here now this a points to a different memory location so this gets filled so with the same input name with the same piece of code i can able to call with the different arrays okay whatever array i pass that starting address gonna come this a gonna point to that same starting that starting address and that particular array will get filled this point is very important are you able to understand guys what i am trying to say sir so can you say that one more time see it doesn't mean that you need to write methods for input method input is a common thing what i am going to do whatever starting address of an array that comes to me i am going to fill that array that is this logic from line number 72 to 79 that is a logic of this method called input so it doesn't you you need not i have two arrays here arr arr2 you should not write two methods like input one input two no input of arr means suppose arr has address of 3000 arr2 has address of 4000 starting address i am telling arr address of 3000 means from 3000 to 3019 3000, 3001 is for ARR of 0, 3002 and 3003 for ARR of 1. And similarly, ARR of 2 means from 4000 to 4019. ARR of 2 of 0 is for 2 of 1 will for first one. So, what will happen when I call input of ARR? The starting address of 3000 will be placed here. So, A will point to ARR. Okay. And once I fill this up, automatically ARR gets filled. In the next line when i call input of arr2 again the same method will be called but with different starting address called 4000 now a is no more the old one right a will be pointing to arr of 2 and this gets filled is it clear yes sir sure. yes I got it. yes so I, I want everyone to be clear here uh this point harika yourself clear Yes, sure. Um, the order uh, first we are writing input of ARR. Then first it will uh, the day will point to three thousand. Yeah. And next time ARR of two, the day will point to four thousand. That's Correct. Saying, that right? is simple. First time A will point to ARR memory content. Second time A will point to ARR two of memory content. Got it? It's the same method. Yes. You are reusing it again and again with the different memory locations of array. So you need not confuse. Yeah. Andrew, yes, you got it. Yeah, uh, yeah, so what is the last uh, the last function what we enter here, it will get, uh, the a will point to that function, right? For example, like if I write ARR of 2, 3, 4, like that up to ARR of 100, a will point to ARR of 100, right? No, no, at each point it will point to the particular thing. So our job is the original array is getting filled, that's it. Okay. okay. First time it points to error. It doesn't like you should not think like finally you write one thing, it will point that only. After the function is over, right? This A will die. But what it did this A before it is dying, it is able to fill the values into the original memory content. Got it, guys? So 
so if i pass here yeah, 3000 address is being copied here so it is filling here yeah, is a of 0 is nothing but the error of 0 only okay that 3000 3000 first byte it is filling once it is completely filled this a will die that doesn't matter but the original address got filled right the values got filled yeah i, I got it. but pavitra you sir yeah please be in mute so yeah so till this point i hope everyone is clear now what i'm going to do i'm going to com convert this sorry i'm going to open eclipse and convert that uh, program a 2d array yesterday we were doing 2d array right that program to in terms of methods so we wrote a big logic big big program actually like in main lot of to couple of for loops and stuff this one yeah so what we going to do now so getting the input if you see same thing same piece of code enter first matrix elements what i am doing i am getting the input same piece of code enter the next element and same thing so instead of this i can define this in a method so same thing we are adding i can put it in a method display in a method so what i can do i can write two methods input for the first method i can pass the array called a a is a first matrix comma r1 is a, a, a row of the first matrix comma c1 okay input again i am going to write a function input now this time b same function same method r2 comma c2 so what happen input input next i am going to write a method called add add i am going to pass a comma b comma i can pass anything r1 and c1 because r1 r2 c1 c2 are same and finally output should be the array c with r1 comma c1 so these are the method calls i didn't had to define the methods now if i click automatically the editor will create one for me see i created a method input and create method add You create method. Sorry, it should be C. Yeah, and create method output. Fine. Now see here what compiler did for us. The editor it created one for us. Output, add, and input. If you see, ignore these things as per now. Private static. I will tell you later what are those things. And see from here void. i didn't had any return type when you declared it so these are just void and output is a method name and similarly add is a method name input is a method name see it's a 2d array c r1 c1 it gave the name, same name you can change it the names also i can change this to input that doesn't matter actually whatever the array content memory i pass at that time it will reflect that output this can be like this okay so in input what i should do what i will do is i will cut this logic enter the matrix elements okay uh, you want to know the first matrix and second matrix right what i will do here i will specify enter the first matrix elements call the input function and again i specify enter the second matrix elements and call the input function and now first time a is passed a will be pointing to input will be pointing to a now okay that's the array and here i just declare int i comma j r1 c1 is already there instead of this i will just put input i can have a scanner here a local scanner scanner is equal to new scanner of system dot in okay and yeah i see one i can put and this is in the comma j fine so see here what happened input so when i called first enter first matrix elements input means it will go here with carrying the a's memory location r1 and c1 value these are call by value that means these are totally different memory locations r1 and c1 because these are primitives but doesn't matter for us because we just passing the actual values even if it get copied to new memory location we will not worry but with respect to input of a automatically this input will point to this array name called input will point to the a next time b so this input will point to b so same method for different arrays so that doesn't matter 
so automatically a and b get filled because of these two calls once it is filled i am calling the filled a and filled b with r1 and c1 okay so in the main program the variable name should be same a b a b and everywhere here it doesn't matter it's just a names where it points to that particular memory location here what i will do add right so for adding i going to copy paste this logic command x yeah so what i'm going to do i'm going to place it here in i comma j now if you see if you see guys i added it but c is local to it i don't know i don't have c but c i defined here so for add what i need to do apart from a and b i need to specify c also then only c will also get filled and filled up if i specify only a and b i am using c here so that will not get reflected so i am passing c here also so now i am changing the add method like change method okay so it will be c so automatically it will come i can change this r1 and then i can change this to c1 fine so this is done got it guys just a minute One minute, guys. Okay, sorry. So what will happen here? I passed A, passed B, I passed C. It can be any name also. Okay, A R R one, A R R of two. That doesn't matter. A R R of three. Automatically, this A R R one is pointing to A's memory location. Because C is the order, error of two is pointing to B's memory location, which is already filled. Error of three is C's memory, which is not filled, which is going to be filled. So I can use it that. Error of three. Error of one. Error of two. So things are added. Now in the output, what I can do? I can simply, I can simply cut this and paste it. I can simply put output. Output is nothing but whatever I pass it here. I am passing it C, so output will point to C's memory location. So see here, the main program will now become very neat. Okay, so I am not going to do any type of logic here. So if anyone comes and see the main program, he will clearly understand what we are doing. Fine guys. So what we are doing typically, getting the rows and everything, and we are just if both are equal, enter first matrix calling the input method. Enter the second matrix calling the input method. Add once A and B are completely filled, passing C also to get filled. After that, just call output to display it. So see the methods, each and every methods, very neat. So you can have it like this. Any doubt, guys? In this program, you can ask as many doubts as you can. Hello. Yes, sir. Yeah. Any doubts, guys? Mm. Uh, I don't have any. Doubts. You don't have any doubts. Great. Okay, fine. Andrew, you are. Can you? Ashok, you can share this program. Yeah, yeah. I will. I will share this program. I will share this program. Andrew, yourself, any doubt? No doubts. No doubts, right? So. Whatever we pass, that reference will point to that. So the memory will get automatically filled. Okay, Arika. Oh, yes, I'm sure I'm clear. Are you sure? I'm just looking the program. Okay. Sa so, yourself. Yeah, I I'm also clear. Okay, Pavitra. Yeah. Okay. So I will bring this program in uh, go to training itself. Just let me know whether you were able to see it, everyone. Just reply it whether you got it or not. Yeah.
yeah this is a program if it is more visible to you so what it is i am explaining again a is an array b is an array c declaring scanner getting all the inputs here if r1 and r2 c1 and c2 are equal to each other enter first matrix elements calling the input method it is passing the a array so automatically the flow goes here this input variable will pointing to the a's memory location r1 and c1 these are two different memory locations but the values are copied here from r1 and c1 doesn't matter okay and to be more clear i can change this to row and column as well not an issue and r1 and c1 copying to the input now when i call for the first time using a the a's memory allocation is getting filled here and again i called input b's memory location is filled here now add a b c a is this arr1 is a arr2 is b which is already filled arr3 is going to i am going to fill it now so arr of 3 of ij is this so this got filled and now again output calling output which i am passing c so here is going to add it okay guys so this is what uh, methods all are all about you can if in terms of arrays you can call it like pass by it like if you pass an array name you will not create a new memory location okay so everything so whatever you change there it will reflect you out so don't get confused with the name function for argument names and with that no way like if it is a here it are also a should be there that not at all like that okay you can give a or anything okay end of the day you need to understand which memory it is pointing that's it okay now i just want you guys to try write a program to find the maximum element in an array using methods okay not like directly in public static void main we need to write a method okay that method should return an integer the method signature will be like this public int find max okay in that inside it will take an array okay so yeah two methods you need to write one is find max getting input also you write in a method public void input int array you write in a method so user will pass an array to it fine you just get array to be filled using input and find max is another method where in the array you need to find which is the maximum element in the array and you need to return that value got the program guys right? so the input will be input in the array will be like say for example 22 4 31 So output will be thirty. This is the maximum. Any doubt, guys, in this program? No, sir. Yeah, program wise, everything is clear, right? The question. Yeah, fine. Yeah. Yeah, Andrew, Sai, Harika, is the program clear? Yes. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Please try in your editors.
you guys can uh, if you don't have a proper uh, red means or eclipse you can try in this link i am pinging you in go to training i am able to compile some programs in this link okay so again i am repeating the question so write a program to find the maximum element in an array using methods okay you need to get one method like input should be a method name and uh, argument is an array and uh, another method is find max pass the array and that method should return the maximum element in the array and this is a an input and this is a output fine
एस के आर यूबल टू ट्राई Yes, sir. We are working on it. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Yeah. So you guys can ping in uh, go to training privately, like how much you have done, so that I will get an idea. Uh, Ashok, give me a few more minutes. Okay. 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 Are you using some editor, uh, Vivek? You are having ID installed, right? Or where are you doing? I have installed Photoshop. Sure. Okay, fine. Trying and fixing. Okay. And really yourself also, right? You have some ID installed. Uh, yes, sir. I had Netflix, but then I am going to download it. It works. Okay, okay, fine. Net beans, you are able to compile and run the programs, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Pavitra, yourself, are you doing in some IDE or Notepad? Sorry, can you come again? I'm trying in Eclipse only. Eclipse only, fine, fine. Arika, have you completed? I said it took two minutes. I try. Saw yourself. Ah, uh, yeah.
Is it working, Harika, this program? Hello, Harika. Hello, Ashu. Yeah, is this program working? Are you able to Hello? run it? Yeah, is this program working? Are you able to run it? No, should not be. No, should not be. It's not working for me now. I'm, I did it in Notepad. See, uh, I will tell you there is some problem in your program. Mm, yes, Andrel, you are fine. I want you to convert these two methods. Yeah, it's simple. You can pass one input method, pass the array A, and then uh, you can find max one more method, and from that you can return the max. Fine. Okay. Okay, guys, l listen to my listen to the program, everyone. So Harika has I'm done. I'm sure I have pinged you the program, but I'm getting through errors. Errors. Okay. Why are you pinged it? Ah, okay. In communicate in chat, in chat, I know. Yeah, fine. So help, help me find those errors. Yeah, I think you didn't declare max. You declared max in the main method, but you have not you used it here, so it will not be visible to that. Okay, yeah, that is a problem. Okay. Right, guys. So, uh, what should I do, sir? Yeah, I will explain with the Harika's program. I will explain so that you will understand what is the mistake. Andrel yourself also okay, just okay. look into it now so that uh, you can see how you can convert your program into methods. Fine. See here. So yeah. So first step in the main program you need to declare an array like this. It's a 2D array. We should declare like this in ARR. Fine. So this is fine. Next, using scanner. Scanner, I don't think you need a scanner here. You can declare the scanner in your input method. Okay. Apart from in the input method, you will not be using scanner also. Correct? So, declare the scanner in your input method. New scanner, it will be scanner system dot new. Fine. System dot new. So, here after all the programs, you should use methods. Reason, when you go to a company, right, everything will be like that only. Fine. Public int input here. Yeah. So, this is a method. Mm. This is a for loop. And here I am closing the method. Fine. Now I'm calling the input. So it should be a void method. Think of when you have an int method and when you have a void method. The input method doesn't going to return you any value. So it should be only void. If you're going to return some value, you need to make it as int. Right? So you just need to make it as void. And you're passing this array, input arr. Fine. Mm. It should be 2D, 1D array. Why are you going to use 2D here? Just an maximum element in an array, 1D is enough, right? So input of A, right, what is this array? Yeah, so all the things should be static for now. You need to put public static, all the method names I will tell you later. What you need to understand, concentrate here is, this is a return type, this is a method name, and this is a name of the array, ARR, you declare here, you pass it here, scanner class, and, and the array is getting filled. No, yeah, this is method is ended here. This brace will not come. And now find max is another method. Return type for find max int is acceptable. Reason is you're going to return the maximum element in an array. Correct. And that you can have it here. Fine. You need not have an output function for this and all. I am not going to print each value in an array. I'm just going to print the maximum value in this array. Fine, Arika. So what you need to do here, you need to just put it here int max fine and put max is equal to find max of that means this find max fun method will return you a maximum value this logic is correct max max equal to a of 0 for j equal to 1 j less than 10 suppose 10 elements are there 
max less than y of j means if y of j is greater than your max, you're making your current max as this one. That is perfect. You need to declare. See, you need to understand one thing. Int ij declared in the main program will not be visible in the internal methods. Correct. Int ij declared in the main programs will never ever be visible unless you pass it here or you need to declare the local variables again. Got it? Yeah. So once you did this, once this for loop is complete, you can return max. Fine, no need of this output method. You can simply return max. That max you will already assigning it here. So don't assume this variable and this variable should be same. This can be anything, variable name. Because of int, the value, it will replace it here. Got it guys? So automatically, what is the problem? Static, yeah. So automatically, this will come here. I can put this as big also. Just a variable name. So whatever I written here, max. Sasha, coding you give a static? Yeah, I will static explain you that. You can call a method from a static block. You can call only another static method. Okay. Still, we are not into hoops. So once we there, I will explain. For now, what you need to understand is give public static. Apart from that, the other things you should be very clear. What is your return type? What is your method name? How we are passing? How we are returning? Fine. Okay. Uh, uh, so, uh, so whatever the methods we use in Java, we should write it as public static void, public static return type on the function name. You understand for now this one alone, void return type. For now, until we move there, you always write public static in the beginning. Fine. Okay. After that, you need to be clear. This is the return type. See, int is a return type. This is a method name and these are the arguments. Fine. Whatever methods you write for now, you write it as public static. So here I am going to write print big. Fine. Actually speaking, this is a code. Arika, did you understood how I modified your code? What you did is uh, you made a max as a separate output function. Your max doesn't have in that output whatever ping you ping you right. See your code. You printed max here. How this max will be visible in this output method? It will not be visible, right? This max is you declared in the where you declared, you even not declared here. You declared in the find max function method. In this method, after this method complete, this max is died. Okay, it is nowhere visible here. Got it? Yes, I sure got it. Yeah. And now I will do uh, Unreal program. I will modify her program now. Unreal, you there? Hello? Hello? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. See here. So what Android you can do is in 10 max, right? So scanner, I see everything is fine. So input, you can see, you did like this. Initially, what you can do, input of A. If you are not familiar with methods initially, you write it completely like this. Then you can write something like this, input of A. And you can click this since you are using an ID already. Now enter the elements of the array and the entire thing you can cut it and you can paste it here got it so automatically what will happen once the array you declared right you are calling a method called input okay you can give any name same name is also fine and scanner you can declare in that method itself and n you need to pass n as well because this is the correct way of doing you need to get an input n from the user right you need to pass n as well so the second argument will become int n Fine guys. So yeah, here also you need scanner, right? The reason is yeah, to get the number of inputs. So input A comma in. Automatically what is happened, it will go here. This A is getting filled because of this. Fine. You make public static, private static, anything is fine. Now next step you're going to write find max. So for find max, if you see you need to identify the maximum element. Again, A comma n you can pass. But the return type you will give a return type for the find max method gonna finding the maximum element. So you need to return some element. So create method and just copy this logic. And paste it here. See, return instead of zero, return max here. Is what you want, right? Yeah. So things are fine now. You can put ARR wherever you have that. Not an issue. Just to make you differentiate it. Now what happens? See, the max, if your, your other, other part of the program is fine. 
you got it unreal what changes i did yeah so if you have initially finding difficult to write in methods as you said write down entire logic slow and steadily if you do that as days progresses you itself will write methods first so you need to think in a logic like find max in this method i get an array as a input n as a another argument input what i will do i'll complete my logic return the maximum array. so because of this this is int because of this is int this find max will come here assigned to max variable got it i am printing the maximum element is max and next input yeah this is a, as usual this is a common method in lot of programs pass the array you get fill it everyone clear i think vivek you also got it right what mistake you did now uh, no so not it see max variable you used right you used in the find max no, I, hmm. i understood the program i understood this program but still i am unable to debug the issue yeah you are getting compilation error right yeah yeah i paste your program in this editor until you got your program right clear Let me paste the next code. Shift F. Mm, I think you didn't close to the main method. See, all the methods you define should be outside of the main method. Okay, first main itself is a method. You didn't close the main method at all. So public static void mean you need to close that first. Fine. So from yeah. So what you did array first you declared an array. You are assuming max. See here enter the number of elements. Then you call the sc dot next string. So you need to call the function input a comma n here. Fine. So you need to call comma int n. So the number of so n will not be visible here, right? so methods so main is a method it's over this is an another method okay inside this method okay. you passing the a and you passing the n and i equal to 0 i less than n scanner how scanner will be visible in this method no it's a local method right we need to declare it again fine then scanner is problem is solved enter next element you are getting it in this method input is over okay what is the problem here you declared the name as arr give as arr here in this input and then find max this is another method you need to call this method will return a value correct so you are closing the method here you are not closing it. what are you doing yeah max you declared here how this max will be visible here it will not be visible here what you need to do into max this will never be visible the only way you can do is you can assign this max equal to find max of arr comma n fine and just take this okay. is out and put this max here fine in this find max public static int find max of comma int n okay so automatically max is it, this this logic is wrong max should be initially you need to assume it as b of 0 okay. it goes with assumption you should not okay. put max as 0 okay b of 0 and for i equal to 0 i less than n v of i greater than max max equal to v of i if such a condition comes and finally before the uh, method getting closed you need to return max this max will be copied to here fine and then close this extra brace then this one is class closing right you can close this also Fine, Vivek. Is it clear your code? Yes. Sir. Yeah. Ah. Everyone, everyone got it right. Andrel, Harga, Sai. Any doubt in this code, guys? No doubts. 
no doubt so writing a method means you need to split it up like this and then you need to complete it up fine okay pavitra you understood yeah this code is correct yeah yeah pavitra you able to understand right okay next step we will move on to you want me to go to next topic like uh, class objects or you want more practice in this methods it's up to you if you want one or two programs i will give now or uh, if you want uh, me to go to class objects i will do or if you want class objects to start in a fresh class that is also fine your wish guys if you want more practice like one or one or two programs in methods itself i can what we make what we can do we make and run uh anything is fine for me as well okay. it's not called and this can say what is yeah and well yourself we shall we see few more programs in methods or we can go to class objects anything is fine for me to assume like whatever everyone can decide okay fine okay then i will give we will start class objects and the stuff in the next class itself as you are not that much fluent in or writing methods i will give one more program please try for today okay so only one this only we covered today so next to program is write a program to search element in an array it's so a quite simple program you need to do it in method search element in an array you do just do linear search searching one by one okay. write a program to search element in an array quite simple fine so what are you going to do here you just pass write a method as usual input will be one of the methods to get the array input and one more method it will be int element if element is found the method should return the index the method name will be like this public static uh, find int find int array comma int this is the signature of the method okay i have given the signature as well so what you need to do in this method write code that will return the index So int n also you will pass the int element. That means in this array of size n, I am passing an element. This I am I will be searching in the array whether this element is present or not. Okay, that is my logic. Write the code that will return the index of the element of the element if it is found. Okay, that means wait a minute. Is the code that will return the index of the element if it is found. If the element is not found, it will return minus one. That means the index minus one is not there, right? So it will return minus one. So sample input will be like this. After it returning minus one in the main program, you should write a logic. If it is minus one, just print the element is not found. If it returns the index, just print the element is found at the so and so index. Fine. So input is like this: ten, twenty, fifteen, so fourteen, twelve, one. Suppose zero. And this is the input array elements. So next, you will ask for the user enter the element to be found. If you enter twelve, you need to display element found at index. So index starts with zero, right? Zero, one, two, three. Index 
but you need to display it as 4 because anyone who sees your program right he never knows you will use array and this anything so for a layman you can just say it is at the fourth position the element is found at fourth position which you need to display next if i enter the element to be found as 15 you will say element not found it's just a linear search you need to do it in a function like this everyone clear with the program first you will do easily in a main program i don't want to do that i want to do like a function like this fine one more function as usual you will write it will be like this public static void input int array comma int n fine this is a program right guys everyone clear right any doubts with respect to the question any doubts no so time clear yeah so the method will be outside of the main main itself is a method yeah all these methods also remember that variable names you declare in that method will specific to that method alone if you declare input int a here you cannot access a here without declaring it here okay those are specific scopes Everyone clear, right? Andrel, are you clear on the question? Arika, Andrel, Sai, Pavitra, Murli. Yes, I sure. Yeah. Please try this program. Also, all the methods should come inside the class, okay? You should not write the method after the class is ended. Okay? All the methods, everything comes inside a class in Java. There is no code outside a class. So, if I say class A starting, I cannot write a method after the class A is ended. Main needs a method. Once that method is over, immediately below, you need to write other methods. Okay. Uh, Murli has pinged me a code where... All the methods are outside the class. That is why I think it's not compelling for me.
हम दिस क्लास नेम एज लीनियर सर्च गाइज लीनियर सर्च हेलो मुरली यू नीड टू रिटर्न द वैल्यू इन द सर्च एज पर माय स्पेसिफिकेशन यू शुड नॉट प्रिंट इट देयर ओके या दैट इज आल्सो इफ आई हैव मोर देन वन की फाउंड यू विल बी प्रिंटिंग मोर देन वन सी शुड नॉट बी देयर फर्स्ट आ करंट सलोन इज एनफ ओके सो यू शुड रिटर्न अ वैल्यू
హలో హలో సార్ ఐ థింక్ ఇట్స్ ఈక్వల్ టు లీనియర్ అండ్ వేర్ యువర్ ప్రింటింగ్ ఇట్ ఆఫ్టర్ దాట్ హారికాస్ ప్రోగ్రామ్ ఇన్పుట్ తీసుకోండి సి దట్ ఈస్ అ పవర్ ఆఫ్ ఫంక్షన్ హారికా యూ నీడ్ నాట్ పుట్ బ్రేక్ అండ్ ఆల్ ఓకే ఇన్ సైడ్ ద ఫంక్షన్ method if you put a break instead of that you can use return statement we going to see that now sai can you go in mute uh, even murli also did like that okay i will explain you guys that is not correct see here yeah see here the input is fine see what he did he took an array in top 10 always as i as i tell use n always that is my point every time declare this as much as possible and always use n like this okay n is the number of elements you want to use in an array like this enter the number of elements to be used okay and use that like this n equal to let's see that next next int fine now int b input a b equal to search of a fine input a comma n till n elements don't put always 10 array size is different this is different fine guys int n so use n here so input function every would have everyone would have done right change this name if we want yeah in the same or different next static int this is correct use here are comma int n n is a number of elements not till 10 this code is correct int n where is key is coming from key should come from the main that is what i told actually this function what i told is this should come from the main enter the element to be yeah once you do the input right you need to give this one actually once input is done before calling search enter the element to be found you get the element here that element is key point see first enter the elements to be used that is n then then calling the input function once the input is done enter the element to be found got the input stored in a variable called key now search of a comma n comma key that is what my specification right so people in industry will give the specification like this fine you need to follow this as such int n and element key is the third one argument so a comma n comma key now instead of you getting input key here you get it here int key okay so now as usual arr of i equal to equal to key you need not actually give a break and then return i so this is wrong when you return i right it will return always i is will be equal to n it will return the last element so what you need to do instead of returning here see this guys listen this carefully what you need to do you can simply return i here no need of break and all that is a that is why we are using methods here what you will do when you give a return no other lines will execute in the method the flow immediately will go when this key matches return the particular i index so automatically it goes to the search it goes to the b variable fine yeah so you may ask when i will return minus 1 when element is not found if it doesn't go to the if at all the code should come to line number 42 or 43 when it comes to line number 43 it doesn't go to the if at all if it have gone to if condition it should have simply returned you i that's it okay guys if it have gone to the if condition it should have simply returned you i so here i am going to return minus 1 that's it 
so when it comes to line number 43 if this if condition doesn't satisfy at all if it goes to this if condition the program will no more in this method the program will no more continue that it will directly go to the main this should be the proper logic able to understand guys this one is it clear everyone vivek are you clear with this yes sir sure I have been doing my course. Oh, okay. I didn't see. Yeah, what you did is, uh, if number equal to i, index equal to i, else index minus one. Finally, you are returning index. Fine. And uh, you you feel this one is much better, right? Than that. Yes, sir. Sure. Yeah. So you didn't use to break up to that point. It is good. So you just uh, your code will be. You are putting if and else inside a for loop. That won't be correct, uh, uh, Vivek. What will happen is you used if and else inside a for loop, right? So what will happen is first the first element, if the element is not found, index will be minus one. If such as the second, if it is found, index will be i. If the fifth element is not found, index will be minus one. Even if the element is there, there is a chance that it will return minus one. Oh, oh. Okay, I understood. You understood, right? So if else inside so a for loop. Okay, I should not use an else, right? Else, right? You should not use else here. So this is a perfect code. It should be either you should put index equal to i, break and come out, and finally return i. So this is our code. I am explaining again. Int array, enter the elements to be used. We call the input function method array, pass it here, fill the array necessary array, and finally enter the element to be found. That element you are getting it here, passing into this, and I will be printing it here. The element is found that that you need to check here. If b is equal to equal to minus one, sys out element not found. Right. In the else part, you will do element is found at position. B. See by writing this, what is what we are achieving here by writing this? Anyone can call a search function. Not only from your class, anyone they can use this as a utility by passing an array, number of elements and key. They will get the index where it is there. If it is not there, they will get minus one. Clear, guys? Any doubt in this code? So first you will call input of a comma n. Next search. This will return i. I means at that particular position where it is there. Otherwise, it will return minus one. Is this clear, Andrew? Are you clear on this? Uh, yes, sir. Sure. Can you repeat it once again? Yeah. So what is happening here is first I am declared a array, okay, and enter the elements to be used. I think till input you will be clear, no doubts. So as usual, we do every time. Yeah. Yeah. After that, see, enter the element to be found. Okay. You are getting a key. Key means the element, the actual element. And I am calling the search function. Search takes three arguments, as I told. One is the array, and the n is the number of elements you actually use. And third one is the element to be found. Key. And you loop it in a thing for i equal to zero, i less than n, i plus plus. If the element array is equal to equal to the actual element. I'm not going to do else break nothing. Simply return i. I found my index where the element is there. No doubts. If it doesn't goes to this if at all, if the entire for loop, then only the code will come to line number forty-five. Otherwise, it will never come to line number forty-five. At that point, I'm returning minus one. Fine. So based upon our specification, if search once we call search, if the b value is minus one, I'm going to tell element not found. Else, element is found at such a position. Clear, Andrew. Any doubts? Specific doubts? No, I got it. Yeah. Harika, yourself. No need to put break and then do Harika. So you can use return statement. Yes, sir. Yeah, I think Sai has done correctly. One small mistake. I think he did. What is that mistake? I think he is not printing x after that. Return x. Return minus one also. You should do. Okay. You understood the code, Sai? Uh, yeah, yeah. 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 Pavitra, I am a uh, little confused. Uh, 
where the scanner class uh, uh, void main also I have to write the scanner class for m and uh, again for array I have to write the scanner class and say the method. Right? Yeah, yeah, we will, we will, we will minimize that once we learn whoops, we can put it into that instance variable later. Okay, so for now you need to write it in both places. Fine. Okay. Yeah, Pavitra, you got the entire flow. You will to understand, right? Yes, yes. Okay. Vivek? Yes, it's okay. You are clear. Okay. Fine. So there are a lot of program guys. So what you need to do, you just try to write all the programs so far, whatever we learned in terms of methods. Okay, say for example, all the programs, even Armstrong number, right angle triangle, series problem, leap year. Leap year, how would the method should be? It should take a year and it should return a string saying it's a leap year or not. Okay, so that will be enough. And uh, maximum of three also. It should take three numbers and return an integer saying which is max. And modulus, okay, every, every code try to convert into methods. This is very important, guys. Then only you will understand like writing modular, modular programs. So that uh, we can go up, up fine. So because next class as per schedule, we are just lagging now. So because next class we need to start class objects and so on. Fine. Then only we'll see other stuff. So till this point, which is common to all programming languages. Okay. Whatever we discussed, arrays, methods, equal to functions, everything just common. Okay. Data types, looping. Okay. So be strong in this first, everything. Fine. Fine, everyone just try doing lot of programs. Not only if you just concentrate on the sessions, it will not help you. That is for sure, 100% sure. You will forget after that. So what you need to do after the hours, you just need to spend some time, try to do programs, try to do our own methods. Okay, then come up the programs. Okay. So, yeah, one minute, let me think a list of programs. See, as I have, I'm going to ping you a list of programs now. So please try everything. Free program, you just try with the methods only. So whatever suitable to Java, please try this. I'm going to ping in go to training. Please, everyone, copy paste it in your notepad immediately because once I close the session, you may not get it. Okay. Everyone got the list of programs. So see to the programs, everything. So if you are able to try all these things using methods, it will be fine. If it is program specific to C++, leave it. Okay. Everyone got it in the chat window. Go to training chat window, everyone. Guys, this will not be saved. You need to copy paste in your PC. Vivek, did you got it in the chat window? Yes, sure. Yeah. It's starting from operators, right? Yeah, operators and ending from ending with call by value, call by reference. That one you can ignore. Uh, rest of the things you can try. Okay. If all the programs you try with methods. Fine. Okay, sure. Simple, simple methods. Everyone got it. Until you got it in the chat. Yeah, 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 sure. I got Just copy paste it because once I close it, no one will be able to see this again. Yeah, I also got it. Yeah. So just let me know if everyone copy pasted it. Pavitra, you copy pasted it? Harika, did you got it? I copied it. Copy it, right? Whoever all there in Skype, they are also helping you for a safe copy. Fine, I think I ping it to everyone. 
in skype also okay each and every program yeah. is try to do with uh, methods don't forget even hcf lcm reverse a given number try to print patterns and everything okay guys okay then see you guys we will meet uh, next week next week we need to start those uh, classes and objects so it's up to you you need to be very thorough till this point okay because the code will be going to a next level from next week. so i want you to people to practice all these things using methods fine sure sure thank you yeah. yes, thank you thank you yeah bye yeah thank you thank you sir